all day. Money, power, respect. Three the hard way. What up, world? Welcome back to Three the Hard Way TV. The quarantine edition continues because I don't want to be around, you know, different niggas coughing on me and shit. Six feet, six feet. Um, on today's show, we're talking financial literacy in the black community. And today we have the beautiful Rashida joining us. We have the beautiful Tiffany joining us. And again, back again, she survived and wanted to come back. We got the beautiful Juanita joining us. And of course, my brother, all the way from Arizona, real. And the triple OG dropping the knowledge, Michael Derek. And ladies, you know who I am. On today's show, as I said, as I said, we're discussing financial literacy in the black community and why it's important why it's not important we all gonna give our views we gonna debate it and you know see who wins or loses or sounds <laughs> like they know how to save some money um miss mcgee yes what are your points on um Oh, okay. So we're not starting with a question. We just want to start with our topic or our points of view on it. Okay. Um, I think a lot of the issues that black community that our black community face deal with financial literacy. Um, for one, we want to blame a lot of the things that's happening to our community on the other man or the white man or whatever label he has now. But I think have we focus a little bit more on some of the things that we can do to empower our finances we can empower our community starting with savings the first thing you hear a lot of people say is well um I'm, I'm just making ends meet so how can i actually save anything in order to prepare for you know a just in case scenario well those are the same people that are buying jordans or have a thousand dollar phone or stopping at mcdonald's every night um there are a lot of things that you can do to save um and i'm not saying that you know things or times don't get hard but i say that our focus as a community is on the wrong thing. And I always bring up this analogy is that our forefathers, our grandparents had way less than what we did, but they accomplished way more. How many black educated, uh, sorry, educational systems did they build? How many hospitals did they build? How many professional um, equipped black people did they turn out? Even when we couldn't even go into the white schools, they sent themselves and their children to school because they pooled their resources. So I think our focus is wrong, especially in our community, especially with the younger generation. Our focus is on looking good instead of learning something that um, actually we can pass on to our kids about financial literacy. Right. That's my take. Juanita. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I'm agree with her on a, on several things. Uh, I feel like as Black people, we were not always afforded the same things that other races were, and it's not an excuse. But I think some of our financial literacy is a learned um, behavior. Some of our parents, and grandparents, didn't grow up with somebody showing them or teaching them, you know, the way. So it kind of trickled down. And not to say that you can't go out and learn it and, and get the information, but some people just don't have that in them or maybe just don't want it. Uh, and as far as the younger generation, I feel like the, the millennials or whatever, you know, the 30 and younger, their parents are so focused on trying to give them you, what you, they didn't have. You know, you know you're a millennial, right? I mean, you know, the younger millennials, you know, what they, what they call them, the Gen Y, whatever they, they call they, they, them. Generation they, X. They post, they post oh, millennials. They're the yeah. Generation yeah. X. Them folks, okay? <laughs> them folks. Their parents were so busy trying to give them what they didn't have. So they want you to look good. They want you to have the Jordans. They, they feel like that is a statement of, like, making it somewhere instead of teaching them how to go out and get it, teaching them how to save, teaching them that a pair of Jordans does not 
um, equivalent that, you know, you have made it. And I think it's just they, they send in the wrong message and it's more so about the show than what really, than they really have going on. And it's, you know, it's just unfortunate, but it's been trickling down as it's going on probably for the last 10, 15 years. And these kids are just so lost now because the parents that they have, you know, 30s and up are just trying to, just trying to make up for something that they didn't have. So. I agree. That's my thing. Miss, Miss uh, Tiffany Marie. Um, I agree as well with the two previous views. Um, a lot of the times, like families, parents, um, people that are older than us, they don't teach these things. We're not learning it in schools. Kids aren't learning it. So it's like, where do you get this from unless you go out and do like the research on, research on your own, unless you're interested in learning about financial literacy. Um, and a lot of the time, a lot of us, we're living in the now and not thinking about the future. We're not saving for the future. We're not thinking about long term. Um, we're not thinking about, for example, like right now situation. What if I lose my job? We're just living in the now. So we're not even saving for situations like this that we're in now. So it's just really like essential that we really put these things into perspective and consider situations like this that may occur. Okay. Real. Um, let's see. So I think that, um, a lot of the times we think that, um, those people who, who buy Georges and stuff like that, um, I really don't feel like there's nothing wrong with it. A lot of the times I think people just don't really know what fi finances mean. Like people don't know what a dollar really means. Money ain't meant to be spent. It's meant to make it work for you. And I think people don't know how to make money work for them. And a lot of times we see people buy this stuff and it is a statement. Even if you go far back as slavery, you know what I'm saying? If Dion, if you was in the field and I was in the house, what you want? To get in the, house. in the house. So that's the same complex that we're dealing with today in our inner cities. If if I buy Jordan, you got a nice car, you want it. That just that's gonna always be there. We fashionable people, but I think we don't know how to make money work. And I don't think that people don't want to do it. I just think they miseducated on it. Like some people just don't really know. So all they know is spend it. People don't even know how to do financial analysis on themselves. Like they don't even know where their money going. Me, I'm in the financial services field and I sit down with families and I say, at the end of the month, how much money you got left? And they say, oh, oh, uh, I should have like a thousand dollars left. But they all, I say, how much money you got in the bank? They say, I got zero. So we sit down and figure out, where they money at and they and then I, we show where they spending their money and they be surprised that they spending this much money on stuff i just sat down with people who spend 90 dollars a day on fast food but they didn't think it was that bad they going out to eat for breakfast they going out to eat for lunch and then they going out to eat for dinner on average we know two to three people that's at least 30 dollars a day so if you spending 90 dollars every day that's why your money going so people first need to learn how much? Because most of them I sat down with too. Somebody said I made forty thousand dollars a year. I say, do you really make that much? And they really thought they did. Not count taxes, insurance, all that stuff. So it's about educating people first. And I think a lot of the times we just miseducated. Like somebody go get a job and they say, oh, I'm gonna pay you fifteen dollars an hour, and they thinking they make that when really they make eleven twenty five because they got to pay Uncle Sam. And then another thing is like, there's no way that people could save themselves into financial freedom. You can't, I don't care how much money you think you can save, you can't save yourself. You gotta figure out ways to make that money work for you. And I'm gonna start right there and then on the second go around, I'm gonna get some more points. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna go before Derek because I'm one of those people like, I like my Jordans, you know what I'm saying? I like my, I like looking fashionable. I like going out and, and spending my money. I like, I like buying new caps and, all of that other stuff when I when I come outside, but I'm also one of those people that like to save my money, you know. So I, I I have a good balance with both because I'm thinking in the long term now. If I if ten years ago, fifteen years ago, I had the same mindset I had now, I would be amazing. You know what I'm saying? I, I mm -hmm. like shit. I I think that I would be fucking rich, just honestly in my personal opinion because. At the rate I'm saving money, like even when I'm like now, I'm working every day, so I'm saving money. So 
my job is like you put in five percent, they match you five percent or something like that. I put twelve percent in my shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go above and beyond mine so that I know that at the same time when I'm going to buy that pair of Jordans, you know, not every month or every two months, you know, maybe like four or five times out of the year when I get a pair of shoes that I really want or something like that, I know that I have money going towards other things. I'm also buying stock. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm showing I'm teaching other people how to buy stock. I'm teaching them how to sign up. I'm teaching them um, you know, shares and dividends and and market shares and different things like that. As I learn, I'm teaching other people. But at the same time, while I'm showing these people these valuable tools that I'm learning, uh, some of my people are looking at me like I'm fucking mm-hmm. nuts. Like, what are you talking Don't about? Know how to receive it? <laughs> like, I'm not gonna give somebody. You know, I, I can show them a stock and I say, okay, this stock is projected to be one of the next big things. It's a gamble. No, no more than you going to the casino or shooting mm-hmm. craps on the corner. You or walking around with a thousand dollars in your pocket and somebody rob you. I'm willing to take my gamble and put it into a, a financial structured, uh, you know, stable place in the stock market. Hope it grows. If it doesn't grow, so be it. Because I know I wasted money on all type of other shit. So we, we need, we got to wake up and, and I'm, I'm still going to fucking, you still going to catch me outside my $300 pair of Nikes on. It's not, it's not going to fucking stop. And, then, and if I feel like I want to go to, God damn it, the restaurant three times a day, I'm going to go in that motherfucker. I'm going to get me some McDonald's <laughs> for breakfast. I'm going to get me a motherfucking hoagie for lunch. And I'm going to buy me some chicken wings for dinner. But at the same time, I'm not one of those people where I'm trying to get the most expensive things. It's a $10 right. t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm going on online and I'm looking for the sales and different things like that. The shoe's just the only thing I'm buying at market price. So I'm not a dummy by a long shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, the mind can't teach what the mind don't know. Right. So when we're looking at financial literacy, that goes in different ways. So economics, definition of economics is the exchange of goods and services. So when we're talking about being educated on what financial literacy are, uh, we have to begin to think about how credit work, right? Uh, Understanding how uh, student loans work, how to get affordable education, like starting off as a junior college where you can get some of the education free opposed to going straight into the university, then you're leaving out owning $100,000 debt. So we are taught to get education uh, in those terms, fires like being in academia opposed to, you know, getting a degree in applied science. Then when you're talking about financial literacy, we are not talk about what is a budget sheet, what is a balance sheet, um, how to um, calculate interest charges, because, you know, in many cases, that's how we get into uh, further, further debt by the interest. We're paying off the interest before we even pay off the principal. So once mm-hmm. we begin to educate ourselves on those things, then we would get better. But I believe that a lot of people do not uh, take financial literacy seriously because in our community, in the black community, we tend to shame those who don't know. So the people who know, a lot of times we shame those uh, for making poor decisions or uh, making informed decisions. And so even though if I, if I do increase my credit score, whether I'm able to get a house, uh, all I'm doing is just still paying the bank. My, the bank still just making money off, off of something that that I'm working for car for. They get their percentage, and they can come back and get that house too. So we need to be clear on those things as well, right? In addition to uh, having the savings, I do have a savings. I do have a, a banking account, but uh, I don't believe that my savings account is going to uh, build me any wealth. So I I have to begin to learn how to invest wisely, invest in some of those stocks. And I might have to, you know, I think uh, with us, some of the things what's important is for us to begin to develop an economic base, whereas we began to uh, practice group economics, whereas each individual began to put a little money into a pool, and we began to purchase some property, resell them, or uh, invest in stocks and things of that nature. Then, now that can trickle down on to others, but we begin to start with our families and our friends, but we cannot shame people 
for what they don't know because the mind can't teach what the mind don't know. Right. All day, money, power, respect, three the hard way.